Thanks for tuning in. This is the next in our collaboration with WBL, and I am speaking this week with Dr. Katherine Saunders. She's an obesity medicine specialist. We have over 74% of Americans who are suffering from being overweight or obese, yet only 2% are actually seeking treatment. Now, it's been 10 years since obesity was actually classified as a chronic condition, not just a lifestyle issue. Dr. Saunders actually talks to us about why is this disease so complex? Why do so few people actually seek treatment? And what she's doing at her company in telehealth and trying to democratize actually seeking treatment and dealing with this tremendous issue. So please subscribe to Inspiring Women to hear more of these excellent conversations. But now let's hear from Dr. Katherine Saunders. This is Inspiring Women, and I'm Laurie McGraw, and I'm speaking with Dr. Katherine Saunders, and she is the co-founder and executive vice president of a company in telehealth, which is fighting obesity medicine. We're going to learn about that. We're here at the WBL Summit in Amelia Island, which is an executive senior women um, group, and we've been having a lot of fun with some of these podcasts, and Katherine, thank you for being on Inspiring Women. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you today, Lori. All right. Well, you are a physician and you're also an entrepreneur and an innovator. And um, that's an exciting thing to be a lot of combinations there. So tell us a little bit about you. And then we want to talk about your company a little bit. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I am a physician. My expertise is in obesity medicine. Uh, I did all of my medical training at Weill Cornell in New York City. I initially subspecialized or specialized in internal medicine and very quickly uh, decided that it was so challenging to treat all of my patients' weight-related medical problems without really having the time or the tools or the knowledge or resources to address the underlying cause of so many of their weight-related health complications, which was their overweight or obesity. And um, at Wild Cornell is Dr. Louis Aroni, who is my mentor and co-founder of our company. Mm -hmm. And he is world-renowned, uh, started this field of medicine about 40 years ago. And um, he had actually given a talk when I was in medical school, third or fourth year of medical school. So I had you know, almost gotten through all of medical school without learning so much about obesity. So is that what influenced you, you know, in terms of like, you know, specializing in that particular area? Yes. His talk just absolutely blew my mind about yep. obesity being a chronic disease, about um, his career in developing effective medical models to treat obesity. So going into residency, treating all of my patients for weight-related health complications, knowing that he was at Cornell and I could start working with him, um, that really got me going on the path to um, obesity medicine. Well, I think obesity medicine is sort of an interesting area. I mean, first of all, I was just reading the statistics of so 74% of people in the United States are overweight or obese. And that is astounding to me in terms of just, you know, the 74%, that's just incredible. Um, so that, you know, the stigma associated with obesity is very real. And now, of course, we have all of this excitement about all of these new diabetes drugs that are serving as weight loss um, medicine. So I'm curious as to your thoughts about that. But before we hit that, um, tell us a little bit about IntelliHealth. Like, would it, like, why did you, so you specialize as a physician in obesity medicine, but then you, what, got the entrepreneurial bug? Like, what happened? Yeah, so my husband is is responsible for the entrepreneurial bug as soon as I became interested in obesity he recognized that I was developing this deep, deep, deep expertise that most providers, most, most healthcare providers don't have. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, as you mentioned, there's a huge demand for obesity medicine. And so his background is in inefficient markets and um, in finance and solving problems. And <laughs> from the very beginning, he was like, oh my gosh, this is an amazing opportunity to help so many people yes. really bridge this gap. So from the beginning, the day I became interested, he was already talking about doing something entrepreneurial. Um, so then in 2018, 2019, we teamed up with Dr. Roney. He had a predecessor software platform yep. that kind of started um, our software, um, was the kind of basis for our software. And then we really built it out to, you know, build out more programming and update everything. And uh, we ended up launching clinical services as well. Mm -hmm. So then in terms of um, IntelliHealth, like what does the company do? Yeah. So we have two offerings. 
One is um, a software program that is uh, a training uh, vehicle to train providers to do what we do without doing an entire fellowship, without doing uh, months and months or years and years of specialty training, because we just don't have the luxury of time to have only obesity medicine experts treating everybody for obesity. So it's to really train providers to spread what we're doing to kind of power existing infrastructures. That's one offering. And then we had so many requests to provide the medical care ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we also have clinical services or basically a telemedicine, um, telemedicine practice. So you have physicians who are part of the company who are caring for patients. So how's the demand? I have to, it's like, must be through the roof. It is through the roof. Um, we have, you know, it's it's interesting. Our business model is not direct to consumer, but I can see patients who want to come and see me. Um, it's we have a lot of demand. Yeah. Um, there's just there's so many people who qualify and who um, are very good candidates for medical intervention. Um, and then on the employer side, you know getting ahead a little bit, I know you're going to talk about the medication. There's been so much demand from employees to um, have their employers uh, cover these medications. So employer groups need, you know, a way of putting guardrails on this because the medications are so expensive. So working with a company like us, we have a whole program and, you know, we determine who's appropriate for what medication and how that works. Okay. So let's, let's talk about the medications. I mean, that is like the hottest buzz that there is. And we've got like, you know, pharma companies who are, have these experiences explosive opportunities. And we're reading um, about that. And maybe even before the medications, which are interesting, why is obesity so complicated? I mean, so, you know, there's certainly stigma and that's like its own issue, but um, obesity or, or just being overweight, it just it, it initiates so many other complications there. So just give us your perspective on, you know, it's like people just think, oh, just put down the fork, right? And that like solves all the problem. And that is just not the case not is my understanding. Yeah, right, exactly. So there still is a misperception that obesity is just a lifestyle problem mm -hmm. that you could just eat less and exercise more, lose weight and keep it off. And for the vast, vast majority of individuals with obesity, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And there are many different reasons I can get into the pathophysiology for hours and hours, but what happens- Thank is, you for not doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I can do it another time if you want to have me back, but it's a lot. It's, it is very complex. Yeah. Um, what happens as we gain weight is that our bodies literally um, develop inflammation around the area of the brain that's involved in energy regulation. Yeah. And so- the feedback signals that come from our gut, that come from our fat cells, signaling how full we are and how much fat we're storing, don't get through as well. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of this feed forward mechanism that as soon as you start gaining excess weight, your body becomes much more prone to keep gaining and gaining and gaining. Yeah. And then on the flip side, when we do any sort of intervention to try to lose weight, our bodies have been evolved over time to be really good at not starving. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that our metabolic rate slows down, we get more hungry. Um, all of these, these mechanisms kick in that originally were kind of adapted as anti-starvation responses right. that make it incredibly difficult to lose weight. Yeah. So if you take a look at data for any lifestyle intervention, the majority of people will not be able to lose weight and keep it off in a sustainable way. And so this is why we have our whole field of, of medical obesity treatment, because it's like any other chronic disease. Yeah. It's complex. It's really individualized. Everybody's constellation of you know contributors is totally different. And we need many medications in our armamentarium to be able to figure out for each patient what makes the most sense and really treat you know, the different facets of this complex disease with medication. Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, in terms of just, you know, we, and as a, as an older woman now, you know, like, you know, that has always been part of, you know, my, um, like, you know, what I think about in terms of weight, but it's always been a lifestyle thing. And I think that one of the things that I've learned, um, you know, over years, it's, it's a long game. There's no such thing as a quick fit fix. Um, and that's what everyone wants, right? Is, is the quick fix. So in terms of these, you know, whether it's Ozempic or, you know, these new drugs that are out there, are these the miracles that they're being purported to be, or are they, are, is that, are we, is it too soon to say yet? 
Uh, definitely not too soon. And the answer is yes and no. Um, they are incredibly effective. And when used appropriately, they're very safe and tolerable. Mm -hmm. And they're more effective than any drugs we've had previously as anti-obesity medication. Mm -hmm. So this is a new era of obesity treatment. It is incredibly exciting. Mm -hmm. The issue right now is that they're very expensive. Yes. And so we can't just give these to every single individual in the whole country that who has obesity obesity because one, it may not be the appropriate medication for them. Mm -hmm. And two, it's incredibly expensive. And so employers come to us because they start offering these more, start covering these medications and then realize that they can't actually afford it. And yep. this is going to be a long-term treatment because it's long-term treatment. Yeah. Um, so these medications need to be used strategically. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we do at IntelliHealth. We treat every individually, sorry, every individual mm -hmm. um, in a very personalized way to figure out, you know, what makes the most sense or what order of medications or what combination of medications makes the most sense. And we don't just give every single patient the most expensive medication. So there's other options out there beyond just these exciting, you know, uh, very, very expensive. What's the, what's in the future? Do are the, Will the prices come down? Is that so like to be told? Do you do a lot of advocacy at a telehealth? I mean, you're working with employers and payers, I'm assuming, you know, to help in this regard, right? Yes. Yeah, so the prices will come down eventually. Okay. Um, we can't wait for that to happen. Right. Um, in the meantime, the pipeline is just incredibly exciting. So there are even more medications in the pipeline that will be more effective than the meds we currently have. There are also medications that will be oral versions and also very effective. Um, there's also research going on looking at agents that may be once a month instead of once a week. Uh -huh. um, so this area of medicine is just incredibly exciting. It's blowing up. It's it's um, it's just incredible what we will what we have now and what we will have to offer to our patients. Well, what a great place to, you know, sort of be in. And again, you know, while I think uh, we can all relate to obesity and the, you know, what that means physically and appearance and all of that, but also the underlying additional health problems, I think is the most important part of what that actually means for people. So the more that you can help with that. Yes, that's fantastic. Catherine, let's go back to you a little bit. So we're here at the WBL conference. Um, so like, why did you join WBL? What's, why is that an important, uh, why is this an important group to you? So one of our dear, dear, dear advisors, Barbara Senich, who is phenomenal, recommended me a few years ago. And um, the idea of being part of a group of such amazing, accomplished, inspiring, inspiring women. Um, who um, Like you. Uh, thank you. Um, amazing, inspiring women whom you literally meet and they say, you know, hi, what are you working on? How can I help you? Mm -hmm. It is just such an incredible organization. And as you alluded to before, obesity is such a complex disease that as an obesity medicine um, physician and entrepreneur and you know with our company it's not just about treating patients individually it's about thinking strategically thinking big picture you know the advocacy you know working with pharma working with employers and so I've already met tens of, of women, almost a hundred women probably in the last, you know, day or two. And every conversation I've had has been inspiring. And I've come out um, having met so many women whom I will connect with after about advocacy, about, you know, payer um, relationships. And it's just such a high yield way to have these great connections with other women who um, will be wonderful collaborators going forward. Yeah. The network of just people who are sort of like in your corner and in your camp who want to help you um, succeed as part of the, the allure of, of this. And this organization um, has been founded on those principles. So it's really um, terrific. And I'm glad that you're again having that experience. Coming back to just, you know, as you chose the path of being a physician and now starting a company, those things are, um, you know, sort of like the hard path, right? You know, you have to be super smart. I mean, you went to Dartmouth, you know, Cornell. So these are like, you know, really top um, organizations, uh, academic organizations. And, um, but you came at a time when, you know, for, for physicians, it, it was sort of losing its luster. It's hard to be a physician. There's a tremendous amount of medical debt, you know, that physicians bear, you know, to be a physician, the road is long, the reimbursement is lower. Um, and so why did you choose to be a physician knowing this going in? Mm -hmm. So I just absolutely loved science and math. 
it growing up. And when I got to Dartmouth, actually my two roommates, my two freshman roommates uh, were pre-med mm-hmm. and I had never really thought about it before, but living with them and seeing the internships they were doing, the classes they were taking, I got very interested. Um, I actually ended up graduating Dartmouth in three years and staying on to do a post back program because I decided to do it a little bit late. So I started during my post back year where I stayed at Dartmouth after I graduated, um, I started doing research and getting really involved in, in areas that um, I just had never dreamed about before. Um, it's true that being a physician comes with a lot of burnout and there are a lot of problems problems. Um, What's been absolutely incredible about starting our company is that we can take all these pain points, you know, everything that burns out a physician and use our technology Mm -hmm. to power our clinical services in a way that really supports our providers to do what we need to do in a very high yield, effective, meaningful way, um, both in terms of not getting burnt out ourselves, but in terms of providing the highest level of care to our patients. Okay. So, um, so, so doing that, it's a it's a long road. It's a hard road. It comes with challenges. And now, as a, you know, a co-founder of an important company, solving a really tackling a large problem. You know, I talk to women about so, like you know, the hard thing about hard things when you are in these senior positions and doing this hard work. So, what so far has has been hard that you surprised you that you did well? Hmm. Great question. Um, What has been hard that surprised me? Um, You know, I think that as a physician, we unfortunately learn nothing about (laughs) about business and (laughs) nothing about some, you know, bigger kind of finance life business skills that would be incredibly helpful. And I feel like every single physician I know, no matter what they go into, talks about these deficiencies. So going from an academic institution to, you know, startup and doing more entrepreneurial activities, um, there's a really steep learning curve. Yeah. Really, really, really steep learning curve. Yeah. Um, and so it's, you know, taking some time to, um, you know, just kind of figure out how a company works, how to run a meeting, yeah. you know, everything that um, many people really take for granted that they just know going right into business that physicians can get to the age of 30 something. And we've never run a meeting in a way that, you know, it's, part of a company and just part of the fundamental things. Yep. Um, so steep learning curve, but it's been really gratifying yep. to, you know, have this medical expertise, but then learn all of these other skills that enable us to take our medical expertise and use that to help so many people. I think, I mean, I, I would just say, you know, from my time working at the American Medical Association, what is also true is that in the, you know, all of the clinical work that physicians have, the need to understand the business of healthcare is imperative um, for physicians today, more than um, just for if they're starting entrepreneurial companies, um, you know, working on the business side of healthcare specifically, but just to, you know, how that that relates to things and turns into things like prior authorization, all of these other aspects that are burnout, but I could go on about that and I'm not going to. So as we close out here, um, Catherine, this is just, you know, fantastic. Um, one of the things that people ask at WBL is like, how can I help you? And what do you want um, others to know about you, your company, so that you can be supported? So what do you want listeners to know, uh, whether it's about you or in telehealth um, in terms of what you're looking for to do next? Oh my gosh, I could go on for hours. But, <laughs> um, I'll focus on a couple of things. Um, you know, you had mentioned weight bias, weight stigma, weight, you know, discrimination. Um, so just really getting the word out that obesity is a complex chronic disease that requires medical intervention for most people, um, just to really kind of normalize that. That's a huge, you know, part of our mission. Um, but that there are effective treatments. And we created, we started the company to scale and democratize access to the very high level care that we deliver that's very effective, very compassionate. Um, So for anybody out there who is struggling with obesity um, or knows friends or family members who have obesity who would be good candidates, we would love to help. Um, Our clinical services or telemedicine practice is called FLYTE, F-L-Y-T-E. So you can go on our website, joinflight.com to request an appointment. Um, Also just in terms of our company, you know, we're always raising money. So if there are any investors out there who are interested in this area, would love to speak with you. Um, And then in terms of employer groups, we're really focused on, you know, working with different employer groups um, to, you know, create programs to help their employees. 
So. Well, I hope you um, are successful on all of those things. It's a big problem and it's important that it's not just for the have and have nots, that is for everyone and you're treating it in that democratized, yes. individualized way. This has been a fantastic, inspiring women conversation. I've been speaking with Dr. Catherine Saunders and Catherine, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Lori. It's been great to be a part of this. Great. This has been an episode of Inspiring Women with Lori McGraw. Please subscribe, rate, and review. We are produced by Kate Cruz at Executive Podcast Solutions. More episodes can be found on inspiringwomen.show. I am Lori McGraw, and thank you for listening.